question 18 then. The last question in the 2015 Advanced Air Maths 11 marks here. A big wordy question, but obviously it steps you through it here. Vegetation can be irritated by putting a small hole in the bottom of the cylindrical tank so the water leaks out and did it good. Torricelli's law states that the rate of change of volume is proportional to the square root of the height, and it's given by this differential equation. For a cylindrical tank of cross-sectional area A, show that the rate of change is given by this for the first two marks. And of course it doesn't actually match it's cylindrical as long as it's a prism, because it's only mentioned the cross-sectional area. But obviously the cylinder bit will, mean, will matter later. Anyway, for two marks. Well, that means there's another piece of information. It's a prism, so the volume is area base times height, which means that you can differentiate that to get dv by dh, because obviously this question is involving related rates of change. So having that, how can you get this from that? So if I want dh by dt, and I don't know it, I could always go via the volume and go dh by dv, because I've got that here, and multiply that by dv by dt. And realising that gets you the first mark. Now this is actually upside down here, so do I, would I need to state it here? So dv, dh by dv whoops, is going to be 1 upon a. Which means, popping it in here, I've got 1 upon a times negative k root h, or if you like, dh by dt is negative k upon a root h as required for the second mark. Now there are some other methods mentioned. One of them is really just a rearrangement of this in a different order. But another method that doesn't actually do related rates of change explicitly like this would be to start with this expression, v equals a of h. And then given that they are both functions of time, differentiate both sides with respect to time. So it's going to have to express that as d by dt of the whole thing, of course. Ooh. So that would be dv by dt should be a times, because that's just a constant, dh by dt. And there you've got your dh by dt coming directly out of this, because you know dv by dt is equal to negative k root h. So there you go dh by dt will be, take that across and divide, negative k upon a root h as required. Because doing it that way, realising you could just differentiate both of those, or rather this expression with respect to time was the first mark, and then sorting it out gave you the second mark. Now part b. Initially, when the height of the water was 144, the rate of change at which the height is changing is negative 0 0.3. Well, there's some initial conditions. We may as well take a note of those. Initially means time equals 0. And at time equals 0, the height of the water is 144. So that must be the full height of the tank, or the height of the water in the tank to begin with. And the rate of change at which the height, at which the height is changing, that's dh by dt, is negative 0 0.3 centimetres per hour. Negative, of course, because the height's going down. And what did the question say? By solving the differential equation in part A, that was this part here, show that the height is equal to, here's another expression, h equals 12 minus an 80th of t squared. Now notice k's disappeared from that. That's because there's information here to put into this. If you feed that into this equation, maybe we'll give it a name, call that one just now. So using number one, we've got dh by dt is negative 0.3, and that should equal negative k upon a, which we don't know, but root h, root 144, which means if this is the differential equation you're going to solve to form this, this negative k upon a can be extracted from here just by taking that across and dividing. So negative k upon a will equal negative 0.3, and that's over 12. 3 into 12 goes 4, multiply both parts by 10, and that comes to negative 1 over 40. And I'm not cancelling out the negatives here, because I want a negative in there. You can knock them out if you like, and then just put it back there. 
So that means the differential equation is actually this thing. dh by dt equals negative 1 upon 40 root h. Now, out of the four marks, the first mark appears to be round about here. But they've stated that as a equals 40k. But it's obviously that's better because that takes them right out of it and we've just got a number now. So, next part would be, how do you do this? Separate the variables. So you've got dh over root h equals negative 1 upon 40 dt. And that gets you a mark for using separation of variables. Now we just need to integrate. So we'll just put in the integration sign here. And notice I can just pop that out of that because that's just a constant. And that's, well, this side's very straightforward because that's just negative a 40th of t plus some constant. Set that out if you like, but you can just think through it. That's going to go back up to power a half, so it'll be root h, and then divide by that half, which is the same as multiplying by 2. Now that appears to be the next mark, just for integrating it correctly. But now we'll need to find that constant, so we'll go back to these initial conditions. Which ones can we use here? Time is 0, and height is 144. So 2 root 144 equals negative 1 40th of t, which is 0, plus c. So that disappears and just means c equals this. 2 times 12 is 24, so I've got c equals 24. That doesn't get a mark, but it will get a mark when you pop it back in. Now run out of room, so I'll just have to go back over here. So I'll just take this up. 2 root h equals negative a 40th of t plus 24. So it's just two steps left. Take that across and half those. So root h will be, and I'll put the positive one first. So halving them would be 12, and halving that would be an 80th of t. And then finally, square both sides. 12 minus 1, whoops, 80th of t, all squared. And that's the last mark. Part C then. How many days will it take for the tank to empty? Two marks. I've got all the equations floating about here. Which one would seem appropriate for the time it would take? Here we go, height and time, because, after all, if it's empty, that means the height of the water is zero. So, putting it into that, we've got zero equals, and you don't need this bracket anymore, because if that side's zero, that's just going to disappear. But I'll put it in anyway. 12, I don't know if I would have done if I was in the exam. You get a mark for substituting it in, which of course just means the square root of both sides, if you like, but that was obvious to begin with. That should be the case. Taking the t across and multiplying by 80 gives you 960, but that was in hours. So changing that into a reasonable unit would be how many days? Divide by 24. There's four 24s there, so that'd be 40 days. And that's the second mark. And so part D then, given the tank has a radius of 20 centimetres, a little bit of information, put that down, R is 20 centimetres, tons of information now. Find the rate at which the water was being delivered to the vegetation, not lost by the tank, to the vegetation at the end of the fourth day. Oh, vegetation, talking about vegetation and gardening, I got these gloves the other day, come through, they're actually chainsaw gloves. But the interesting thing was they came with instructions. And here are the instructions. Very handy. Hey, that was for you though, wasn't it? Oh, very good, Maxwell. Anyway, so, what have we got? Well, I've got information all over the place. The rate at which the volume is changing, that's the rate at which the water's being delivered. So this is the expression you want to use. You'll need to know K, you'll need to know H. I'll find this K first of all, because here's the connection between K and A. K upon A is 1 upon 40, and A, since it's a cylinder, is a circle, so that'll be pi r squared. And if the radius is 20, it'll be pi times 20 squared, so A will be 400 pi. Popping that in there, K is going to be, take the A across, 400 pi upon 40, so K is going to be 10 pi. That was a mark. Now we need the height. Well, here's the connection with the height at the fourth day. So, h is 
12 minus an 80th of the time in hours. Well, if the time was four days, that would be four times 24 is 96 hours. So that's 1 80th of 96. Now this is going to be a pest of a number. But at least I know I don't need to square it because I want the square root of h. So it's really just this part here I'll be using. But even that, what's that? It's in 80th. I know you can just press the buttons in your calculator. Well, that would be 12 times that's 960. Take away 96, let's say take away 100, 860. Add on the 4, 8, 6, 4, which is quite handy because they divide by 8. So that's 108. So I've got 108 over 10. I could take it further, but I've got a 10 there, so I think I'll just leave that. Something fortuitous might happen with that 10. So there's the height. That's a mark. All I've got to do is now feed it into this. So finally, well, I'll put it over here. dv by dt is negative k root h. So it'll be negative 10 pi times the square root of this, which is 108 over 10. So that gives you negative 108 pi centimetres cubed per hour. For the rate of change of volume in the tank. Which means that to the vegetation the tank's losing it, so it's got a negative rate of change. The vegetation's gaining it. So to the vegetation then, dv by dt will be positive. So 108 pi centimetres cubed per hour. And that was the last mark. And it doesn't mention having that in a decimal equivalent, because you tend to leave its exact values anyway.